what's up, Ed? What's How up, you what's feeling? up? I'm Welcome all good today. To the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, do you have any weekend plans? Because the weekend's coming. So, what you got going on? I do. Um, so, this weekend, obviously, is March Madness. Um, so, I'm feeling good, D. I'm feeling am- amazing. You know, anytime with March Madness, you know, you want to... You have those different uh, anxieties. You have the the Cinderella. So it, ma- it makes you feel good. So I'm a big basketball fan, so I'm just ready for the weekend. Okay, so you grew up in West Garfield Park. Yeah. And now you're representing Austin. So yeah. tell me what it was like growing up in West Garfield Park. Okay. Um, so as a baby, I'll say this to you. I um, came from a two-parent household, um, real, ch- real church going. And... You know how we talked about my son playing basketball mm-hmm. every day. Uh, we were going to church every day. You know, so we had the Sunday. You know, the head Sunday school, then the regular, and then going to the uh, the afternoon service, and then you had uh, Wednesday was uh, no, nah, it was Tuesday. No, nah, so Wednesday was Bible study. We had Tuesday. My mom had to go to choir rehearsal. Uh, you know. It was it was a lot. It was a lot of a lot of church. So that's what most of my time was actually um, you know spent. So I kind of grew up as a church boy. That's my point at that. Um, you know. So with that particular guidance, um, I wasn't able to do um, like going out with multiple friends and doing those those type of you know things. Uh, I grew up actually. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say grew up. I kind of still do um, as a uh, introvert. And the reason why I did that because I stutter, so I grew really? up. I, I stutter. stutter. Oh yeah, really bad. Even now, sometimes. I've never heard. You catch me off guard. It's like Porky Pig. For real. <laughs> no, it's it's not Porky. No, no. It's what is it? What's the uh? What's the pig that stutters? Is it a pig or oh? Is it whatever? I don't but know. yeah. Is so it Duck? one no. of them. That's all folks about that one. Right. It there is, you go. I don't know his yeah. name. Whoever. So I stutter a, a lot. So growing up, you know, I had speech therapy. So they kind of forced me not to like talk a lot mm. so most people you know most people thought that was like a, a sign of me being shy being calm being reserved uh, but no i just i didn't want to be laughed at right so as yeah. we talked about like sports uh, like sports kind of like helped me get out those um those um aggressions or experiences you know so i started to talk more doing sports because you know that's what you have to do you have to communicate um so now, like in uh, high school, for instance, um, like most people, like say, like you say, didn't know I stuttered, and that's because uh, all throughout grammar school, I had speech therapy. Uh, so my it speech got better in high school. Got way better. Okay. It got way better. Uh, I was, you know, obviously reading at the, you know, whatever grade level I was at. Um, you know, I wasn't made fun of because the basketball team was really good. You know. Oh, you must have hated being called on to read out loud. I hated being called oh, on, yes. 100%. Even though I knew how to read, but, like 100%. So it was certain words like the W's, the S's, um, the Z's, mm-hmm. you know. So I tried to stay away from those words, <laughs> you know, obviously. Um, you know, but just now, you know, thinking hindsight, you know, me being a police officer. And most police officers aren't introverts. You would think that everyone is a extrovert. Mm-hmm. You know, so what I use now, you know, from that particular growing up, uh, every chance that I get to have like public speaking, I do it. So most people think they, they that I'm doing it for them, right? I am, uh, <laughs> but it's really for me. You know, it's like a it's like a self preservation thing where I'm trying to, you know, tell myself and prove to myself that hey, you know, don't let that particular you know uh, issue you know stop what you need to do. You know, as far as communication, I think I was 35 when I learned what emotional emotional intimacy was, and it threw me off. I was like, "Huh, what does that what does that actually mean?" You know, uh, so I gotta say big ups to my wife for uh, for trying to to help me. You know, in in my late age, right? Um, and you know, the communication. You know, I you know because I was an introvert, my care level about what other people felt was was low i'll say that i cared but it was low yeah because nobody cared in my mind about me stuttering you know so um 
now hindsight, me being a police officer, I care about everybody, right? Even though some people don't care about me, you know, and that's the um, that's the nature of the job, which is uh, a pretty cool part. So you grew up in West Garfield Park. So what was it like being a teenager in that neighborhood? Uh, it was fun. It was fun. I remember. Um, I actually, I still have the same friends. I still have that's the same weird. friends. Really? I still have the same friends. We. Um, you know, we, we randomly call each other on Facebook or, you know, our cell phone, stuff like that. Um, but we would hop on our bikes, ride downtown, ride through other neighborhoods. Downtown. Right. Yeah. We were, everybody was athletic then, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was, it, was, it was fun. I wouldn't say carefree. We understood um, the system back then as far as the gangs and the particular cultures that existed uh, then. Uh, so we understood those and kind of... Still, you know, being being kids, you know, like we would go to uh, to to BBR. Like we used to walk. BBR. I, well, I'm sorry. The boy, well, the Better Boys Foundation. Okay. It was on. Um, it was on BBF? like BBF. Yeah. Okay. B, yeah, Better Boys Foundation, and it was on like uh, like Karloff and Madison, and we went all went to Daniel Webster, which is on Arlington and Pulaski. Oh. Right. So we used to walk all the way up there. I wouldn't let my son do that right now, right? <laughs> um, so it was just, you know, just thinking back, like, man, we were so carefree. And the reason why I went to, to BBF was the for your, um, well, they had, like, a yo-yo contest. Exactly, were right? Were you dope? Oh, I was decent at the yo-yo. Uh, hey, Ooh, listen, I was I, 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 Yeah, yeah, see, I, yeah, we, we were just about to do the same. The same. <laughs> yeah. So, you yeah. know, we, we would walk. You know, that was, that was the... Um, the uh, there was that time then where even the game bankers, for instance, they were they knew you weren't trying to do anything. It's just kids walking, so you was you was free to go. That's so cool. it was a I had a pretty decent childhood. I'll say that. That's the you know what most people, especially young black men, when you grow up in urban areas, um, they don't have that same experience where like people just allow them to be. You know, I think that's dope that people just allow y'all to be like. Sometimes it's like one kid that they see that may be promising. They like, don't touch him. Yeah, he cool. But you said you had a whole yeah. group of people. It was, it was, it, it yeah. was all like love. It was eight of us. So we we all started in grammar school uh, at Webster. When all we I all know went, y'all got a group name. We all went. What is the group uh, name? There's no group name. <laughs> you know what? Man, that's interesting. And um, and you know, we all actually went to Western House together. So it's you know it's pretty. Those, you know, those are my brothers and sisters. That's dope. Yeah. I saw. I recently saw a picture of Snoop Dogg and his friends. Did you see that picture that Mm-mm. was going around? And it was like, we've been friends for like 40 years. And it was like when they were teenagers. And yeah. now, it was the dopest thing ever. Because, yeah. you know, friendships sometimes don't end up last, lasting so long. So there yeah. are a lot of people... That can say, hey, I've known, I've been friends with these people since elementary yeah. school. And it'd be legit, too. Yes. Not like a uh, associate. Like, yes. Like, you've been at my house eating my mama pizza, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, as you know, CLF is all about lived experiences. Mm-hmm. How have your lived experiences shaped who you are today? My lived experiences. I'll say, um, as a police officer. Uh, so, my lived experiences. Uh, and this may sound funny. Um... So, like, just growing up, your perspectives in life change based on your, um, I'll say your uh, experiences. experiences. And you you have to, like, see things as, as with a small lens. So, like, you're getting, somebody may think something of you because of the way you dress. Somebody may think something because of the way your car looks. Yeah. Um, what clothes you have on. That's true. So hindsight, what I'm going through now with the police department, uh, if I'm in my Mark squad car, you know, people look at you funny. Uh, if I have on my uniform, people look at you funny, you know, and um, and that's okay. Yeah. And I'm saying that because of my life experiences where uh, it was, I was, I learned to navigate my emotional feelings and not letting you know, you know, someone's opinion of what they thought of me, mm-hmm. you know, um, break me down. Right. So like, like I say, like, so now me as a, a police officer, uh, when people, you know, see the police, they normally, you know, clench up with things like a that. little bit, but those things don't 
bother me emotionally because that's what I always saw when I was growing up, yeah. you know, where as a young black kid, you know, people go to the other side of the street or walk a little bit faster. So now it's, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me emotionally. Understand. I understand what they, uh, well, not necessarily what they're thinking, but I understand that it's just an emotion and it's not me uh, as a person. They're not talking about Edward. No. So. They're talking about officer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So who would you say is the most influential person in your life? I got a lot. I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of different spaces. Um, so understanding what, what your, what your question is, um, you should have mentors in different spaces. So like, uh, in the police department, uh, I am, uh, the mentee of Lieutenant Jermaine Harris. Um, I have in the, uh, in the faith base, you know, um, so many, cause I grew up in the, uh, church. Um, so like my, uh, like, so Pastor Steve Epting of, uh, Hope Church, um, Pastor Clarence Stores, who's my pastor, uh, at Mars Hill, Chicago, you know, uh, in basketball fences, my brother, Terrence Daniels, you know, he was, he was actually the one who kind of put the ball into my hand, nice. you know, so a lot of, a lot of different people that are, um, still at, at that same pedestal. So I wouldn't just say one person who's most influential. It's pretty much everybody. Okay, I can respect that. So normally at this time we would do finish the lyrics, but due oh, to a shoot. little copywriting, okay. mm, friends okay. from uh, YouTube, <laughs> we had to change up the game a little bit, and we're gonna complete the quote. So or guess okay. the quote, I should say. So you're gonna guess the quote. The quotes are gonna come from black movies, black okay. cinema, right? And um, are you ready? As long as it's not uh, training day. It could be. Nah. <laughs> it could be. You never know. That's typical, right? I just, yeah, Come it on, is. I got it. I got it. I got it. I can be. I can be Denzel. You, okay. You ready? Real quick. Go ahead. No, nah, I can't do it. No, nah. Do it. Do uh, it. Uh, now, <laughs> now we want to know. You can't. You can't leave us hanging. I do it later. I do it later. Uh, uh, I got you. I got you. You got up at that gym, y'all. Yeah. Um, He's talking about Plymouth Rock. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, I got the bike holiday. What is that, Friday? No. I got the black. What? I got the bike holiday. I don't know. Uh, 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 give me some, some music or something. I need a hint. I got, um, I got the bike holiday. Yes. It's, let me see. Um, see, when I think about bike, Wanda, I, I the think. The person name is Wanda. What is that? Um. Oh, Lord. I don't know. Holiday so, Heart. You never seen Holiday Heart? Like it's like a staple. Fifteen years ago. Okay. That comes around Christmas. Oh, was, was that Valentine's Day? When does it come out? It's just a regular movie. It's not like a uh, mm-hmm. holiday movie, even though it's called Holiday Heart. His name is Holiday. I know that. Vin Rhames in it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Really great. Yeah. I thought he did an amazing job yeah. on that because he was this big buff dude <laughs> right. in every he movie. putting on a wig. And it, for him to change and make me feel like he convinced me that he was right. that person. I was like, man, you're kind of amazing, dude, because he was Some slow. Good yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He, he did that. See, I was thinking of Friday with the bike. So when people think about the, the bike, bike smoking, when he took the guy bike, when um, he gonna ride the car. <laughs> right, yeah. When he took his, when he rode on his bike, Debo. Yeah, yeah. but nobody said I got the bike holiday. <laughs> I don't know what he said. He, he probably was running. <laughs> um, judging him, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm not going to use the B word. I'm gonna call y'all some unstable creatures. creatures. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. See, I know it, and then I don't. Oh man, you, you got me on this one. You unstable creatures. Oh lord. Yeah. I got you another one. Bus! Bus! Why am I escaping? Why is this escaping me? It's like I I know it too. (laughs) So build you a little fort? Care about your little fort? Yeah, it's baby boy. Baby boy. Baby boy. There you go. I'll give you like five. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's like, yes, forget your your fort, man. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay, let me tell you something. This here. Right now, at this very moment, 
It's all that matters to me. I love you. It's urgent, like a mf -er. I don't know. This sounds like a Master P movie. <laughs> That's fair. It's not, though. <laughs> 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 I ain't gonna lie, though. You had some corn. Yeah, some but, but movies, see, that, that was that had a lot of meaning to it. It did, man. It did. See, I was thinking that was gonna be a question the way you came off with it. No, it's a quote. It's Lorenz Tate. What is that from? I'll give you a clue. It's Dead Presidents? No, though. Solid movie. No, I know him personally. He's probably gonna be like, dude. You know Lorenz Tate personally? Cause yeah. they're from Chicago, right? Yeah. And you man. don't know that? Ooh, awkward. Um. <laughs> What's the, uh, read it one more time. Let me tell you something. This here, right now, at this very moment, is all that matters to me. I love you, and it's urgent like a mother effer. That's him with, um, Neil Long. My wife's gonna kill me. Jesus Christ. Ah, come on, come on, come on. Ah. It was, it was here uh -huh. in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. You got it. You, you have Cause, the... cause he like soul brother, soul brother something. Mm -hmm. Uh, man. Brown, that's not brown sugar. Is it? Nope. What's it called? Love Jones. Love Jones. Ooh. Yeah, the love Jones. <laughs> oh man. One more, and we gonna get out of there. You I'm ready? I'm like an 0 for three. I know. Jeez. I'm a little bummed out. I definitely yeah. thought you were gonna do better. I thought it was life. gonna be like more like you know. Um, Everyday quotes that everybody yeah. is No, like, I just can't give it to you now. Man, he didn't. And those I can't. You went the holiday. Come on now, that's. I That's started that school. one out good. That though. was like, that was, You got me on most that. Most people one. be like, oh, like, what? Because they really just remember that one scene for real. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say something like Mike Larry. You know, <laughs> man. Oh, okay. You ready? Okay. Okay. This is the last one. When did you fall in love with hip hop? Now that's brown sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> see, I ain't let you. I ain't do you dirty. I, I had to let you go off on a high. Yeah, that's brown sugar. <laughs> So, I don't know, but I feel like I may be taking your black card. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 25, 25%. So. 25%? I'm, I'm, I'm one for four. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, no. So, um, how did you hear about uh, CLF? So, I heard about CLF from, uh, from Lieutenant Jermaine Harris. Um, I saw him... Uh, speak doing like different speaking engagements saying that uh, this cohort was coming and that I should join uh, so just doing more you know research um, it's been a blessing okay what was your thoughts on um, the street cred check the street cred check um, so I'll give the audience just a little a little, little info about what it is um, so D was there um, <laughs> and then it was um, it was two other, no, it was two or three different people mm -hmm. who can vouch for you uh, for the works that you do, uh, along with some of the administrative staff from um, CLF. And uh, at first, I was like, I've never been in an interview where they're not asking me to talk. <laughs> they're asking everybody else to talk. Uh, but it, it actually, in that moment, it made me feel uh, proud. Yeah. It made me feel like, you know, the, the people that uh, that uh, came out and spoke on my behalf, um, that's how they see me. And that made me feel even better. Yeah, it was really beautiful. I, I never did that before, before doing that with CLF, where we, instead of asking for resumes, we wanted to have real people speaking on your behalf yeah. to learn more about you. Yeah. So we asked various of questions to learn more about you, your learning style, your communication style, how you handle criticism, yeah. you know, how you go about that. And in those moments, people got to receive their flowers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes people were like, man, I felt like I wasn't doing enough. And here these people said I was doing more than enough. Yeah. And I needed to hear that. Yeah. You know, it's like so, sometimes you need to hear that because yeah. sometimes this work that we do that's is dealing with our hearts and it's so much yeah. passion. Sometimes it feels like it's not enough. Yeah. And it was genuine and unscripted. Yes. So, um, like, so, like, when my, you know, people started speaking, I was like, I didn't know what they were going to say <laughs> or how they are going to say I'm like, I'm, I think I'm cool, you know. Uh, but yeah, it it really put me in a different space of like, um, you know, understanding what I do and why I do it. Um, it just made me feel, you know, made me feel good. Yeah. Wait, were you the one one of the people that was crying? I did not cry. I did not cry. Are you sure? Roll the tape. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So you gonna cry in the car? 
See, we just talked about that. Yeah. Though you, you yeah. would you have gotten that one? Nope. I would have played it off. <laughs> so, um, what has it been like as a fellow so far? So we did the orientation. You got to go to the Global Leadership Summit. And now we've been doing sessions with these amazing speakers. So how has your experience so far been? So I know we have uh, applications open right now. We do. We do. We do got applications. I'll say it has been an amazing experience. Uh, just like you just said with the Global Leadership Conference. Can I give you an example of what I felt doing that particular time? Yeah. I had never been to a space like that. So I'm in a mega church for, like, I think it was, what, five to 600 people. Yes. Uh, and some of the same people that I would look at on YouTube were speaking, mm-hmm. you know. So I got the, and, you know, going out into the hallway and seeing that they are actually real people, you know. Uh, so that was a total different experience for me. You know, that kid coming from the West Side, you know, only seeing what he able to see. Uh, so I was super uh, excited when the CLF uh, proposed that um, the CLF retreat. <laughs> so that was nice. Uh, so even now, what I'm doing is um, I'm learning how to kind of like navigate systems. Mm-hmm. So understanding what pipeline development is. I know that was w- one of our last uh, sessions mm-hmm. um, with philanthropy. So understanding who who you can speak to to get to where you need to get to. Mm-hmm. And not letting those people, uh, you know, uh, I ain't gonna say like off the hook, but like trying to help build relationships. Yeah. You know, everything is about relationship. So as we talked about uh, funding and, you know, fundraising and uh, why people don't get certain things is yeah. because people don't know you, mm-hmm. you know. So understanding the, your pipeline development um, to me has that's been like a, a game changer. So, like, even in my real life, you know, I'm trying to figure out who do I need to talk to to get this and who do I need to talk to 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 get that and actually know those people. So I can be that liaison for most people. Right. Not just to get out of a speeding ticket. You know, (laughs) I know a guy. Right. Um, So, you know, just just understanding that your net worth, you know, like trying to trying to figure out all those things. Okay. Yeah. I remember you using a quote at the end of uh, our last video. What we- oh yeah, um, what is it? Uh, uh, understanding your uh, that your net worth. Uh-huh. Well, you know, you're sorry. Your net work can be your net worth. Yes. So it's all about who you know. It's all about who you know. It's relationship building. That is very true. Most people buy into you as a person, as yeah. to then your the idea or as to you know whatever project you have working on. Not that it's not amazing. But they're like, well, I know you as a person and I know how amazing you are. And I know that you're going to do the best that you can to make whatever you're saying to come true. So I'm investing in you. Right. So a lot of times things, good things come from that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm learning that. It's it's pretty dope. Yeah. It's been cool. He has been an introvert. You're very quiet in sessions. Yeah. You know. Well, as far as the the questions, you know, they they have some, some pretty... Um, amazing people that come uh, speak, uh, and sometimes I I just sit there like and amazed, like yeah. man, like that was that's actually pretty cool, you know. Or this person is just like me, or you know. Uh, so I I do sit and you know, I think about you know the relationship afterwards. I want to let you know let those people uh, be who they are, and the people who need to ask the questions, ask the questions. Mm-hmm. So that goes back to how my mom taught me, you know, be seen, not heard, you know. So okay. that's that's my excuse for not doing that. So uh, also my CLF experience. All right, um, the food. What I've noticed. All right, so every session we have warm food, and it is catered uh, by some of the, the best restaurants. I've noticed that. Um, I don't know if I told them that, you know, um, but I, I did see that that was a, um, uh, a point of interest where we had, you know, the different tacos, the, the pastas and, you know, we had some jerk, uh, everything, everything, egg rolls, egg rolls, you know, so the sessions, you know, <laughs> you know, you don't have the itis afterwards, but, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I guess you know what I can blame that. That's probably why I'm so quiet and reserved then, because y'all feed us too well, and then afterwards I get sleepy. There we go. 
That's my excuse. You know what? We take pride in making sure that we give you guys quality meals yeah. for breakfast and lunch. You do, for real. So we appreciate. I'm yeah. gonna speak for on behalf yeah. of CLF. We appreciate you yeah. saying that. For real. Like honestly. I get there I get there early, um, just so I'm the first one to eat. <laughs> Is that why you get there early for See? real? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a point to well, I it's thought you see, just wanted to spend more time nah, with us. I, I'm trying to eat. Okay. That's, that's some good stuff. Mission for <laughs> you. Uh, line. Make sure no one get the one I want. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I know that you are a police officer. You mm-hmm. mentioned it a few times. So tell us about the work that you do. How did you even get into being a police officer? You know what, D? I'll say this. Um, my answer to that changes every single time. That's fair. I'm not going to joke to you. Um, so initially, I ain't gonna say initially. I'll start. I'll start off by saying this. I think in this role to become a police officer, you have to be um, kind of not. It's a gift by God to become a police officer. All right, to be a peacemaker. Yeah. All right. Now to get back to all the other stuff that made me become a police officer. Uh, my favorite color is blue. It is. That's a fact. My favorite number is 12. Okay. No, it's not, though. Um, the salary, um, but the commitment that I have, like, um, I wanted to, you know, challenge myself to become somebody uh, that someone can look up to. Mm-hmm. So, legacy is really important to me. So, some of the things that I'm doing right now in the community uh, with the Chicago West Side Sports League. So, um, the it's a conference. So it's the Chicago Westside Police and Youth Sports Conference. It's about 500 registered kids. Uh, so we play wow. uh, basketball, baseball, archery. Um, and in that program, it's a holistic approach mm-hmm. to, um, to kind of kids, right? So you have, um, like, you know, athletics, but holistic meaning like you have the police department involved. You have the churches involved. You have nonprofits involved. Like we've had, um, you know, sponsorships through, um, it's many, just so you know, but like um, Meridian. So that's for like the healthcare. So like I said, it's not just athletics. You have uh, like Walmart, we had Amazon. Uh, through COVID, we had Rush. Oh my. So Rush was giving out, um, you know, COVID on checks and things like that, you know, allowing, you know, if people wanted it, the, um, the vaccine. So it goes deeper than just sports. Mm-hmm. Like you're able to, you know, come at what most people would just see as a AAU league, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but you're coming at it totally, totally different. Um, so definitely violence reduction program. Okay. Yeah. So just to recap, you said that you became a police officer because your number favorite number is twelve and your color your favorite color is blue. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? So the twelve and the five oh I actually I always ask the kids when I go out there, I say, well, What does that mean? I don't know. Do you know? No. I just know that it represents police. I don't I don't know like right, the but why, origin. Though? I don't know. I don't know. Ooh. We need to we need to research that. That's true. I, I know. So uh, like when people say five oh, I remember um, like Hawaii five oh. You ever mm, seen them, yeah. them officers in Miami? Mm-hmm. We don't dress like that. <laughs> so we got to look that up too. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's a good question though. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure someone um, has told me because I, I want to say I'm a person that asks questions. I'm like, I'm like, what's yeah. So I feel like someone told me because even like think about like mind your if somebody say watch your be on your p's and q's right, right? and it's it's a saying you know that it means you, to pay attention to pay, your, yeah. right but it really was when people were, when they were typing it you know using typewriters it was like don't miss your p's and q's so Correct. make sure you're paying attention Pants. to that that you're not doing that but mm. that became then like a way to say hey watch your back watch pay your, attention to your surrounding heads on the swivel right head on swivel yeah yeah oh, yeah so. I'm interested in learning yeah. what that is. We got to, we gonna see. Yeah. But you are a twelve, huh? I, I am. So my favorite number is twenty three, though. Michael Jordan. Okay. So. Okay. So, um, tell me a little bit about some projects that you're working, you worked on in the past. Okay. Um. So, uh, I work alongside of um a lot of a lot of different organizations. We have one in the Fitching District called the uh, the Art. So that's the Austin Response Team. So what this particular unit does, um, it's a group of uh, faith-based leaders, 
uh, non-for-profit organizations. And what we do is uh, we mobilize to a particular area that had a particular trauma. So let's say if there was a homicide on on the, let's say, 5,000 block or wherever, right? Mm -hmm. We would uh, go to that block and and just love on that block. So we have the, the pastors, we are praying, uh, we have the non-for-profits, they have all their different um, uh, resources out. So we really just want to love on that block to kind of break down that that neighborhood trauma. Yeah. You know, so uh, that's something that we got going on right now. Uh, the Block Club, um, Block Club Convention, you know, that's, that's about to happen. Uh, it's uh, April 1st. Uh, and Michelle Clark. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be nice. Uh, there you can learn how to do resume writing, uh, learn how to do grant writing. Uh, there'll be jobs there, the Secretary of State there for your IDs. Is this so free? It is free. Do it they have free. to register anywhere? They can just show up. Okay. They can show up. Cause nice. Because you know, with most times when people say register, they don't anyway. <laughs> just show up to Michelle Clark 10 o'clock on uh, April 1st. Yeah, so that's that's one that's that's another big push that we're doing right now to to really like just uplift the community. Because um, sometimes what we found in the police world uh, that nobody has IDs or valid IDs. That's one of the things we ask for first, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it's really empowering um, in the community to 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 have their P's and Q's together. Right, so <laughs> that's um, eyes cross your T's. Yeah, yeah. So at that block club convention slash resource fair, like you'll be able to, to do that. And it's April first at Michelle Clark. Yep. Nice. Yeah, from yeah from ten to one. Nice. So, what are your future plans? So, I know you're an officer right now. Are you wanting to stay an officer, uh, climb up the ranks, or are you wanting to completely do something different? Well, I'm loving where I am now. Um, I think, you know, 100% CLF has, like, given me a different insight. Um, what I, I do, my goal, I started off being a police officer and wanted to stay for at least 20 years. Um, if, at the rate that I'm going now, it'll probably be more. I really love what I'm doing. Um, going up the ranks as far as, like, sergeant, lieutenant, commander, um, I'll lead it up to God. You know. Okay. I, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to stress about that. You know, if it happens, if that happens, it happens. Well, um, as far as my legacy right now, I'm pretty good with that. Um, my block club, uh, I am trying to focus on reestablishing that uh, 5300 block of uh, Ferdinand, trying, trying to get different, get that block club together and others um, to kind of just bring the, our community together. And then once we bring our community together, obviously, you know, going citywide, but you know, those are my those are my goals. Okay, to be more involved in the community. Yeah, but you're fine. With, okay, I yeah. like that. Yeah, and okay. then work on my pipeline. We talked about that earlier. I, 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 Your you pipeline know, would be what? So I can be that guy, right? So you know, if if somebody needs something in in particular, um, where they be, um, I'm gonna make a joke here. This is a joke. Um, so somebody who, you know, needs to fix a flat, right? I know a guy, you know, um, if somebody who knows, um, who wants a particular grant, I know a young lady, you know, who can, um, who's in my cohort, who, who's pretty good at grant writing, who has her own business. So That's I can, I can refer to that. Shout right? out to Leanne. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, you know, you know, if, um, uh, if you want to start a, a running program, well, get into a running program. I know a guy. You know, um, as, as we talk about like reparations, I know a lady, you know, it's, it's so many, it's so many different things. So uh, I can be that liaison for yeah, most people. For people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's my goal. I like that. So is there anything that you want the audience to walk away with? I would want the audience to walk away with, um, I would say police officers all right and i want to say police officers not police because when you say police that's a really broad statement so actually seeing the officer behind the badge uh, will help you as a person understand that we are human as well um and um and our legacies are not to hurt but to help that's it is there anything that i have not asked you but you feel like you want to share that sounds like a resume question, D. 
<laughs> um, shout out to my wife uh, for holding it down for my family and I. I couldn't do it without you. There we go. Okay, Thank nice. You <laughs> what is your social media handles like? Where can our audience find you online if they want to know a little bit more about Ed Whitaker? Um, so Facebook, um, Ed Whitaker is my name on that. Uh, Instagram is Mr. Ed to you. <laughs> I know, right? Um, is there any special like a two in there, or is it Mr. Ed? As it sound? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, two as the number. I knew it. Yeah. I felt it in my spirit. Yeah, I felt it. Yeah. So go like, ahead and yeah. say it out like. Go, Yo. Ed, so spell it out. M R. This is e not D. ASMR, bro. <laughs> two as the number. You. <laughs> so, Mr. Ed, to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What LinkedIn? Uh, anywhere else? Uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I don't know it off the top of my head, That's but right. I do have one. Okay. Yeah, I do have one. <laughs> okay. Cool, B. So, um, thank you so much for joining me thank today. You, thank you for having me. Do, thank do, you for do, having do. me. If you enjoyed our show, please rate and review us on Google and Apple Podcasts. And be sure to come back next week to meet a few of our fellows. Until then, I'm your host, The Elegance Lane. And don't forget, live here, work here, lead here. For more information on CLF, please go to www.clfellows.org. Hi, this is Alexandra August, Executive Director and Co-Founder of Community Leadership Fellows. I'd like to thank our advisors and seed investors who coached, mentored, and guided us through our exploratory year in order to make the investment in Westside talent possible.